Stacy in Houston, Laurel, are you ready for the event? Houston, station is ready for the event. Purdue University, this is Mission Control in Houston. Please call the station for a voice check. Station, this is Purdue University. How do you hear me? Hello, Purdue University. Welcome on board the International Space Station. I have you loud and clear. Hello, Laurel. Thanks for meeting with us this morning. I'm Eleanor Dias, a student and ambassador in aeronautics and astronautics at Purdue. First of all, how was your New Year's? It was amazing. We got to celebrate New Year's about 16 times as we orbited the Earth. Um, saw a bunch of new sunrises and a lot of fireworks all over the world. It was cool. We have a group of students here in Armstrong Hall eager to hear from you in a small window of time. Do you mind if we jump right in? Absolutely. Prior to becoming an astronaut, you worked on the engineering and operations of deep ocean research vessels and submersibles. Now having worked in both deep ocean and space environments, are there any similarities that you've noticed between the research and exploration of both mostly unexplored frontiers? I have. It's um, It's been kind of funny being up here just because there are so many similarities. Um, but two things that immediately come to mind. One is that both fields attract really passionate people um, who are passionate about their work and also just in being part of making the world a better place or as good as we can. Um, the second part of that is uh, there's just an appreciation for the balance of uh, preparation and adapt um, adaptability. So um, both for space missions and also for um, the research that we do out at sea, it's we do as much as we can to prepare. We train, we get all the equipment ready, we try to think through every scenario that might happen out at sea or up in space. Um, but then once you get out there, things always come up. The plans never go perfectly. And so being able to react in real time and build on all of your experiences and all of your preparation to come up with solutions in real time, um, that's very much a part of both worlds. Hello, Lauren. It's wonderful to meet you. I am Deepam Patel, a PhD student in computer science. My question is, most people don't realize that vast amounts of the research done in space also directly contributes to research on Earth. What are some of the experiments that you're working on right now, and how is your work supporting or adding to research efforts back on Earth? Thanks, that's a great question, and all of the work we do up here benefits um, everyone on Earth and also our future in space exploration. Uh, some of the experiments that I've been involved in recently are life science experiments where we are investigating um, aging and the immune system and, um, th and how the microgravity affects that. And then also um, our cells actually age faster when we're in microgravity and so researchers on Earth are able to study um, aging and um, its effects on the immune system uh, faster and in a way that they aren't able to on Earth. I've also been involved in another experiment called fiber optic production where we are investigating um, creating new optical fibers in space that are better than those created on Earth. Hi, Laurent. This is Michelle from Purdue Polytech. Um, most people only play for astronaut training many times, and I was wondering what is it that kept you going in between each round of applications? It's a good question and also very true. Um, it, I applied three times before I was selected, and I don't think um, anything really needed to keep me going. By the third time, uh, by the third application, I had found my way into work that I was really passionate about and really excited about doing, and I would have been um, very happy continuing to do that for the rest of my life. So I feel very fortunate in that regards. Um, but I think um, that was kind of a, an important thing for me was always doing something that I was uh, really enjoyed. Uh, this is Partho. I'm a PhD student at the Mechanical Engineering Department. So I have a question regarding what are the top skills uh, needed to better your chances of becoming an astronaut? First and foremost, um, it's technical excellence. That's what gets you in the door. But there's also a lot of other qualities that are really important. One of those is having an operational mindset. So being able to think clearly and function well under pressure. Uh, one very important one is being able to play well with others. Um, our home up here on the International Space Station isn't very big and there's seven people living here. So um, being able to get along as both a teammate and a leader is very important. Um, and then last of all, just being able to take care of yourself and take care of your teammates in environments that might be very abnormal, such as the International Space Station. 
My name is Adriana Waterford. I'm a freshman in FYE going into aerospace next year. Uh, my question is, what is the most beautiful thing you've seen in outer space? Oh, there's so many. Um, one, I mean, I love looking at the Earth outside of Cupola. That's one of my favorite things to do up here. Um, seeing Space Station for the first time was actually um, one of, also one of my favorite memories about arriving to Space Station. Um, I was looking out the window at Earth and um, suddenly I looked up and I just saw a space station and it was funny because it was this like very familiar thing that I'd seen pictures of and seen so many times in training but I'd never seen it in real life um, and it was just so beautiful. Um, this stark, uh, just incredible piece of engineering against the blackness of space. Um, it was just a really beautiful thing to see. And then lately, one of my favorite things has just been being sitting in Cupola um, during a night pass and watching city lights go by underneath us and then looking out at this just vast sea of stars. Um, you really feel like you're in an ocean of stars, and that's been very beautiful. Hi, my name is Tremont. I'm a junior in aerospace engineering. My question is um, probably not the most complex question to ask, but it's the one that still interests me. Um, what is it like going up on a Soyuz rocket? How would you describe the experience? Well, launch day is one of my favorite days of my entire life. Um, but going up on Soyuz in particular uh, was really special for me. Um, there's just so much history and tradition surrounding launching out of Baikonur. Um, so that was really neat to get to be a part of. And then, but the moment you actually get to the rocket, um, you pull up in a bus and you're just right in front of the rocket. Like you get off the bus and you're standing right there next to it. And at that point, it's this like living creature because it's been loaded with propellants. There's um, the, the ox there's smoke all around it that's just like kind of almost vibrating. It's just alive. And then you get in this tiny elevator uh, where all three crew are just cr you know jammed in, kind of like sardines uh, with the elevator <laughs> operator, and you ride up and crawl into this rocket. And then from there. Um, it's very much like training, like we spent many, many hours in a simulator in Star City doing the exact procedures that we did on launch day. So once we got sat, once we sat down in our seats and got strapped in, it was like very similar to training until um, again, a, cu a couple hours later, uh, when we're ready for launch, the rocket just suddenly start the whole thing starts vibrating and you suddenly realize like uh, this is <laughs> this time we're actually leaving Earth. Um, and then it's eight minutes to orbit. We got up to orbit and it was about an hour, I think, before I got to see the Earth for the first time. And then, um, you know, you see the Earth in pictures. It's like seeing the Grand Canyon in pictures and then going and seeing it in real person. Um, there's just, it's hard to describe what it's like just seeing it out your window as far as you can see in either direction, just beautiful blues and whites. Um, so overall, just an amazing ride. Hello, Laurel. My name is Spencer Durham, and I am a junior in aerospace engineering here at Purdue University. I was wondering what thoughts or emotions stand out for you during the launch, and especially during the docking process when you finally arrived at the ISS. Thank you. Uh, two, there are two emotions that stand out most from launch day. Uh, one is just this feeling of incredible support that I had. Uh, from my family and from the operational team in Baikonur and from people um, all over the world. Um, friends and family, um, everyone in my communities, people I didn't even know. Uh, there was just this incredible rallying of support around the crew in those final few days before launch. And I'd seen it for other crews and I'd get, gotten to be a, be a part of it for other crews and getting to experience it for myself uh, it was just really special and it was a feeling that I'm never going to forget. Um, so that that was amazing. And then the other part of it was just waking up on launch day feeling just 100% ready to go start this job and go do the job that was before me. Um, it was a good feeling after two years of training and you know, all leading up to launch day, there's all these questions and you're trying to look at things for the, la the last minute and like take care of all the little last things and I, so I wasn't sure what waking up that day would be, but I just woke up with a very clear mind and this sense that I was ready to go, ready to go do this mission. Namaste and hello, Laurel. Uh, it's great to talk to you in near real time. Uh, I am Dr. Shitaj Mal, uh, a Systems of Systems Lab member, and I work as a research scientist here. So my question for you is, NASA works very hard to prepare and train all astronauts, but not everything can be simulated on the ground. 
So what is one thing that you were surprised by the most when you got to ISS, even after this extensive training? The one thing that NASA can't train us for, they, tra they do train us for everything, uh, but they can't train us for microgravity. So when we first get to space, we don't know how we're going to feel or how we're going to react or really what it's like, you know, when you're living and working um, in an environment where one minute you can be on the ground and one minute you can be working on the wall. Um, <clears throat> so that's been one of the most challenging, but also by far one of the most fun things about being in space is just um, learning how to live and work in microgravity. <clears throat> I thought it would get old, but every day there, I still have moments where I'm floating through a module and I'm just like, I can't believe this is real life. I'm just kind of floating here and with just the tiniest po push of a finger, you can send yourself in another direction. Hi, Laurel. My name is Robin and I'm a junior in planetary science. And my question to you is, are you able to find room or time to be by yourself and unwind in such a limited space? Yeah, one of the things that I really appreciate about my crew up here right now is that uh, we all really enjoy hanging out with each other, and we have a lot of um, good times and good laughs together, but uh, we all also all appreciate um, having some personal time and alone time. And you would think it's hard to find that space up here, but we actually do a pretty good job of it. Um, we each have our own crew quarters, about a phone booth sized space that we can close the doors and be by ourselves. Um, and then there's also plenty of little nooks and crannies on space stations, so uh, there's windows in the in the gym or there's little spaces in the airlock or this module so you can always you know tuck away somewhere if you want to read or write in a journal or just think about things or be on your own. Hi my name is Sean I'm a graduate student in the School of Aeronautics and Astronautics and my question is what advice do you have for aspiring engineers? That's a great question and first I would say um, follow your heart and intuition when you're making decisions. Um, somehow they they will take you in the right direction. Um, next, I would say learn how to communicate well and just how to be a good human. Um, that's important no matter what you're doing. Uh, third, I would say realize that all the greatest moments and greatest achievements in life um, come from a lot of time spent um, doing hard work, uh, maybe struggling, and they also come with a little bit of a sense of risk. Um, and then last, know that it's okay to make mistakes or fail. And everyone says that and you're like, oh, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's okay to fail. But until, <laughs> until you, you know, you really have failed or made a big mistake, it's um, hard to know how you'll react. And how you react in the moment and afterwards um, in the time that follows is more important, I think, than the mistake itself. Hi, Laurel. This is Bhakti Patel. And my question is, has your world perspective changed since being in space? I don't think it's changed so much as just been reinforced. Um, one of the things that I feel very deeply up here is a big sense of connection to planet Earth, um, both the people on Earth and also uh, the nature that we have on planet Earth. And so the perspective that we have up here um, is of Earth without any borders. Um, it looks very peaceful from here uh, when you're looking down on her and um, just that deep sense of connection is one thing that has been reinforced for me. Hi, Laurel. This is Michelle Ladekin, and I have a very simple question. What do you do for fun on the ISS? For fun, I spend a lot of time looking out cupola. Um, I've developed an interest in photography, which is easy to do up here, so I spend a lot of time just looking at Earth and then also taking photos of Earth and space station and the stars. Um, I also like to read a lot, so I've been doing a lot of that up here in my free time. Um, hanging out with my crewmates is something I do pretty much every evening after work, and talking to friends and family on the phone. That just about concludes our time with you. Is there anything else you wanted to tell us before we have to sign off? Thank you guys uh, for speaking with me. It's a pleasure to get to talk to everyone in West Lafayette and boiler up. <laughs>